So we are a revolutionary organization. We believe that if one wants to know what it will take for us to become free, all we have to do is look at history and see what it took for us to become enslaved. And if we find any place in our history that we voted ourselves into slavery, then I say, let's go and get together and vote ourselves the hell out of slavery. And if we can find any place in history where we sang our way into it, then let's sing our way out of it. But the reality, that is not the case, sisters and brothers. The reality is that we are going to have to cut, shoot, and bomb our way out of the circumstances that we find ourselves confronted with. And I know that's not something that everybody wants to hear, and it's not something that a lot of folk want to hear. But it's the truth nevertheless. This is not a suggestion uh, at this meeting uh, that uh, once you on your way out, we're going to be handing out AK-47s uh, for people to go out and do your thing. The reality is I'd be extremely afraid to pass out AK-47s in the community because I'd be afraid that I'd probably become one of the first victims uh, of the AK-47. In other words, there's a lot of work that we have to do uh, in the interim. But having said that, having said that there's a lot of work we have to do, we have to also remember that our objective is total, absolute uh, liberation for our people. And you can't have it any other way. There's no way that you can talk about sharing the power over your lives with somebody else and then feeling like you got a right to complain about what somebody does to you. Either you want the power or you don't. 25 years ago, in April of 1991, the African People's Socialist Party initiated the founding convention of the National People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, later to become the International People's Democratic Uhuru Movement, or NPDA. That historic convention opened in Chicago on April 6, 1991, the 23rd anniversary of the U.S. police murder of 17-year-old Black Panther Party member Bobby Hutton. APSP motivation for founding Impidum was clear. The struggle for the liberation of our people had to be resuscitated after its crushing military defeat of the 1960s. The masses of the colonized African population of the U.S. had to be brought back into active, conscious, independent political life. The counterinsurgency that had come with our defeat, ushering in a period of mass demoralization, disorganization, dispersal, and chemical warfare in the form of the imposition of a drug economy had to be exposed and defeated. Since then, MPDUM has been fighting for the democratic rights of the oppressed and exploited African community all over the world. In 1966, Chairman Omali Eshetela, then known as Joe Waller, was jailed for ripping a mural down that hung in St. Petersburg City Hall that negatively depicted African people entertaining white people with enlarged facial features. At the same time, we have struggled tooth and nail to rebuild revolutionary organizational capacity capable of representing the genuine interests of our oppressed people. It has been a road of struggle that has taken us into every imaginable venue from the chambers of the city halls of various major cities, where we challenge neo-colonial politicians who sell out the black community for crumbs, to the courtrooms in which our people are railroaded by the U.S. injustice system, to the sidewalks in the freezing cold and unbearable heat conditions. MPDUM has been there, fighting, every step of the way. We have made it impossible for imperialism to know peace within its own system. We have not struggled simply for justice for one person, but to win reparations, economic and political power for the entire African nation. Not until every African man, woman, and child is free to be themselves in a world where black power has risen will NPDUM stop the resistance. NPDUM has years of resistance and a history of fighting back for the African working class. We supported the movement to free Fred Hampton Jr., framed up in Chicago in the 1990s. In 1996, 
MPDUM represented organizational leadership for the African working class when young Africans from the south side of St. Petersburg rose up in resistance against the point-blank police murder of 18-year-old Tyron Lewis during a traffic stop. Three weeks later, following the grand jury's exoneration of the police, the community again rose up to defend the Uhuru House from a military attack. Their response was to slander that brother, to isolate and criminalize our movement, and then to indict us to send us to prison. Because of our stance of defending our people, the cops attacked our headquarters in an attempt to crush our movement. They failed. And we prevailed. The community rose up to defeat the police in what has come to be known as the Battle of St. Petersburg. NPDUM is internationally known for leading the African resistance. We are in Africa, Sierra Leone, Bahamas, Germany, and London. In 2005, we supported the struggle for justice for Ori Jalo, a young African man who was burned to death while in police custody in Germany. In Miami in 2006, seven young African men were captured by the FBI after being framed by provocateurs who were recruited to brand them as terrorists in a U.S. Justice Department campaign. MPDUM was the first to organize in their defense. From 2007 to 2009, in Oakland, we stood courageously in defense of Oscar Grant, Andrew Maupin, Leslie Xavier Allen, Casper Banjo, Jose Luis Buenrostro Gonzalez, Mac Jody Woodfox, and Anita Gay, all murdered by police violence. In 2008, it was NPDUM who led a protest against the U.S. presidential candidate Barack Obama during a town hall meeting he held at Gibbs High School in St. Petersburg. In that action, NPDUM raised up the question heard around the world, what about the black community, Obama? In Bronson, Florida in 2012, NPDUM led a powerful struggle to free Eric Oliver, an 18-year-old African who was arrested and charged with assault for defending himself and his family by beating down a white lynch mob who came to lynch his younger brother. NPDUM has fought for black community control of schools. In 2013, we waged a successful campaign to free baby Dylan from the clutches of Pennsylvania Hospital where the doctors forced the baby to take morphine against the wishes of his mother. In August of 2014, MPDUM rose from the ashes of the Ferguson Rebellion where the African working class took to the streets and fought back. After the acquittal of Darren Wilson, black people of Ferguson, led by the African People's Socialist Party and NPDUM, led the black people's grand jury and put him back on trial and found him guilty of the murder of Michael Brown. The launch of Africans Charged Genocide campaign came shortly after the assassination of Mike Brown. In 2015, MPDUM braved the frigid temperatures of the Northeast region, sleeping in tents on the Africans Charged Genocide winter encampment tour to follow the United Nations. The president of MPDUM spoke to the United Nations panel of experts on behalf of the African working class on the conditions we face in the United States. The war being waged on the Flint, Michigan residents once again sent MPDUM to the front line with the message of Africans Charged Genocide campaign to let our people know that this was genocide. On March 31st, 2016, in St. Petersburg, Florida, the Pinellas County Sheriff's Department drowned three teenaged African girls, Dominique Battle, Lanaya Miller, and Deshanti Butler, by chasing them and ramming the back of their car into a pond. We have fought fiercely to get justice in the form of black community control of the police, reparations to the families, and the immediate resignation of Sheriff Killer Bob Gaultieri and the other guilty sheriff's deputies with the Three Drowned Black Girls campaign. And PDOM currently leads the Keep 28 campaign against war reduction. The north side of St. Louis is being targeted by gentrifiers and parasitic developers to build their condominiums. They want the black community out, but we say... Get the hell with that! We say the hell with that! 
We recognize that reducing the wards is not just an attack on the 28 aldermen, it's not just an attack on jobs, but an attack on the black community and self-determination. Reducing the number of wards from 28 to 14 will dilute the black voting power and concentrate the voting power into the hands of the ruling class, the white community, and its parasitic gentrifiers. And PDOM has responded to this attack on the black community with the launch of the Keep 28 campaign, creating a petition to keep 28 aldermanic wards and hosting weekly Keep 28 rallies. And PDOM has brought the fight against ward reduction to the St. Louis Legislation Committee themselves, marching into the meeting with the call, Keep 28 is a fight for black power. What, what is happening now is the African community in North St. Louis is about to be starved to death. The only time y'all release finances is when y'all uproot us. 114 million y'all decided to uproot us. Then spent 1.75 billion dollars. I can see if y'all would have put 1.75 billion dollars in the North side, believe you me, it would be much different now. But when you restrict, on, when you restrict finances from coming in, and it get dilapidated, then you get certain ordinance to say, let us do something about it. Well, this is what you can do about it. Step up out of the way. I just want y'all to know, the Key 28 campaign is up for a fight against this reduction. We will fight, we will mobilize, and we will bust out to make sure that this is not a reality for our babies. Because our babies do not deserve to continue to live in the same oppression that's brought by the capitalists and the pyramids. We tired of it. And we ain't taking it no more. And Pedum crossed paths with longtime community organizer Jesse Todd, who united with the Keep 28 campaign. We would soon campaign together during Jesse's bid for 18th Ward Alderman, running on the Black is Back Coalition's 19-point national black political agenda for self-determination. He would go on to win the election, successfully bringing the revolution into the electoral arena. So another um, you know, uh, campaign that we're launching is Keep 28. This is a great strategy. This is exactly where we met Jesse Todd. So um, Chairman had a newspaper article and he said, do y'all know about this war reduction in the wards? I'm like, I don't even know, we, we have wards? <laughs> He's like, comrade, you know, you know, you criticize because you gotta know that. You have to understand the terrain. You know, and that's why the African working class have to come into political life because I'm in the class and I'm here telling you that I didn't know any of these things five years ago. I was Herdosha, an evangelist, in my house trying to confuse, didn't understand why my brothers was murdered, why they went to jail, why my daddy was on crack. I didn't get it. I was blaming myself. But coming into political life helped me to understand strategies and tactics. And so this is a, a strategy to bring a social movement about so the African working class can come into political life and then, you know what they happen? Is they get confidence in themselves. Because one thing that is stolen from the African working class, people just keep doing stuff to us and for us. And we have to understand what self-determination is. And so that's what this reform does. It brings about a change in the psyche of the mind of the people that have been beat down and told that they can't do anything. So that's what we have to do. And Keep 28 is not only for St. Louis, but gentrification is happening all over the globe. And so not only do the pay people in St. Louis get to participate in this, the, the international world get to watch what we're doing here and understand this is a blueprint of how you fight back for gentrification. Because gentrification is not some cute thing and they, our neighborhood get diverse. This is death. People will die. They have nowhere else to go. So we can't allow that to happen. It's black community control of the police. This is not... You know, this is a revolutionary reform, okay? Because we're saying, and if you try to change it and twist it up for white people to be able to swallow it, no surrender! I'm not trying to make white people swallow it. I want you to hear exactly what I said. I said black community control of the police. I said Pookie and Ray Ray have to have the power on the police in their community. I'm in a dope
Pusha, Street Walker, half a seat on the board and say what the police should look like in our community. You heard me. And I ain't changing it up and I ain't switching it up. That's exactly what we said. So that was so important to win our neighborhoods, our community, for everywhere black people are, wherever the class is, that don't let nobody come and tell you about no review board, because we got a review board right here in St. Louis. Right after Ferguson, they marched and protested and they used this, this momentum of Ferguson on the class and got this review board passed. But I'm here to serve you and tell you that Africans have been killed before Mike Brown, after Mike Brown, and that review board is still siding with the police. So what is a review board? Okay, so we talking about real revolution, okay, when I'm talking about any kind of reforms. Because can't nobody win me to not doing anything that is not gonna overturn this system that sits on my kids' future. Y'all, we dying. I'm dying, I'm done playing with anybody. You know what I'm saying? I'm over that. You know, I live amongst the people. I eat with the people. I see the conditions of my people. And simply just fighting for some reform, you know, is not going to change their conditions. Um, and Chairman's political report is charged the PDOM to have offices. And so wherever EPDOM is, in South Africa, wherever we are, we want places where people can actually walk into, tell us about their complaints, where they can shoot pool, where we have political um, education, where they can buy touch and feel black power, literally, by Uzi, by the Colonnades, by the Huru Pies, um, and to have um, a real place where we can have our own. Because my first role, you know, into, you know, political life was five years ago when Mike Brown died um, on the streets. And when I seen my community go up and I seen the resistance and I seen my nieces and my nephews and my community out there fighting. And what the news never talk about how the crime went completely down when the rebellion, because we knew we had one enemy, one enemy. So when you talk about so-called black on black violence, the solution is revolution. The solution is revolution. And by no means, by no means necessary, don't get it twisted. If you want to stop the crime in our community, then you have to grab hold to what real revolution is and don't sell out for nobody. I don't care who don't stand with you no more. I'll be standing on the right side of the question until we are redeemed, free people. What has been laid out is not a script taken from the movies, but a horror that African people face daily. And at the core is colonialism. The reality is there has never been a time since we have been in this country where we have known freedom and democracy. That in fact we came here as part of a process that took our freedom and democracy away from us. The 60s was a dress rehearsal. Now the curtains are rising on the African Revolution and the people are ready to sing victory. Whether it comes from revolutionaries fighting against U.S. imperialism or the colonization of African and oppressed people around the world and within the U.S., MPDM must continue to bring the people into mass, organized resistance. This is an incredibly significant historical moment that we must move to capture and define. The future of our people requires it. When do you want your freedom, young man? I want freedom then. You can wait till next week, though, can you? No. What is freedom? Freedom is black power. The future of the world depends on it. Forward to the revolutionary national democratic victory. Build the international people's democratic Uhuru movement. Uhuru! Uhuru, my name is Kalambai and I am the president of the International People Democratic Uhuru Movement and I need you to join. We say all power to the people. All power to the people. We say ease way leg to e Africa. Ease no compromise. No surrender. No surrender. Uhuru.